man, I hope we both get this. Man, I hope, I hope, because this just feels so right. So. Yes. Given that Tolkien's world is such a big, expansive scope, I'm curious, were either of you fans of his works prior to coming onto the series? Uh, yes, I was, yes. Um, my introduction to Tolkien was in 2001, the Fellowship of the Ring film, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, saw that, then I read the Hobbit book, uh, then I saw all three films by the end of it when they came out, uh, read the books, Lord of the Rings, and then read The Hobbit. Um, saw The Hobbit film, sorry. And then, so yes, I, I, I approached this as a fan, yeah. I arrived here, I was a big fan already. And I had seen the films, and I wasn't as familiar with Tolkien's lore in general, but what's so interesting and, and uh, what is such a great opportunity is when you, when you get to be part of something like this, you just immerse yourself. You do the deep dive. Suddenly you want to just, you know, read all the things and devour the information, and, and, and it's a, a sort of a perk of the job because you're basically getting the opportunity to just fully geek out and nerd out and spend your time reading and sort of pondering over all these ideas and worlds. So, you know, for me, I'm, I'm sort of a late to the party, but, you know, at the party, new fan of Tolkien and, and all his work. There's never a bad time to join the party. Uh, exactly. as as the <laughs> um, now, I'm curious, as far as I can tell, uh, we've not really learned much about either of your characters and what we can expect from them. Can you give me any kind of teases of what we can expect from both of you on the show? Today, we can. Yeah. Um, so we are happy to be able to tell you uh, some information. Um, I am playing Queen Miriel. So uh, she is the queen regent of the island kingdom of Numenor. And as queen regent, uh, that essentially means she is not fully yet the queen. So there's a little bit of a, a crumb there. Uh, and, and in season one, we will sort of uh, come to understand what exactly that signifies and, and how that sort of plays out. And she is a leader who is a thoughtful leader, has a moral compass, a moral center, um, wants to maintain the relative peace and stability of Numenor. Um, but also is aware of the sort of uh, the murmurings and the rumblings in the streets. And you essentially have a segment of society that wants to preserve tradition and hold on to tradition and not lose that. And then you have a segment of society that wants to leave that all behind, progress, move forward, modernize, innovate. And so you're seeing Numenorean society grapple with those ideas, and you're also seeing these characters navigate that and, and you know, with all the awareness of their, how their choices, uh, you know, affect their people. And uh, my character is Farazon. I play Farazon, and Farazon, how many times can I say Farazon <laughs> in, one, <laughs> in one sentence, but he is uh, the cousin of um, uh, Queen Muriel and her, her consul, her right-hand man, and it's his job to make sure that the relationship between the Regency and the people of Numenor runs smoothly. So he's, he's a man that is about like social cohesion and uh, tying the island kingdom of Numenor together. Um, he sees himself as an innovator, a modernist. So uh, Cynthia was just talking now about you have the traditionalists. Farazon is all for modernism. He wants to trailblaze and celebrate um, Numenor as an, a true kingdom of men rather than sort of uh, hark back to the days of our elvish roots and everything. He's not for that at all. He sees it as backward looking and he's, he's a forward moving man. Um, he's very resourceful. He's all about creating legacy because being a man, he's mortal. Um, and like all men in uh, Middle Earth, they're burdened by their mortality. You know, salt rubbed in wound when you see elves who can live forever. So with that legacy is important for him as well. So he's a man with a lot on his mind. So with your uh, characters being so close to one another, what was it like for each of you coming up with a rapport uh, with one another off camera before bringing it into each scene? It was very, very easy because Cynthia is just the loveliest person as well as being an incredible actress. So it really was my, I am, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna say it how it is. Um, on my first day, my first day of filming was with Cynthia. 
and it was just wonderful. It was like a, a, stepping on the set was like you know every Christmas and birthday rolled into one. It was amazing. And that that set in particular is mm. like pretty jaw dropping. It really was, yeah. yeah. And then oh, again, what, what helped as well is that she was so incredible. Uh, her grace, the way the way she conducted herself, and and the way she made me feel at home on my first day on set was absolutely fantastic. So I mean, L- likewise, and mutual appreciation, respect. You know, it's we are lucky because within our world you know I think what everybody brings to the table is just that sense of integrity and professionalism Mm. and and the deep research that everyone does. So even when I hear, you know, my castmates, especially within our world, talk about our world, yeah. I, I'm like listening and hanging on to their work because it's like, wow, they just they, the way they sort of, uh, you know, put it. I'm like, yes, it's mm. it's. But you know, it's interesting because I think back to our casting because you know, obviously in the era of COVID, you have a lot of virtual casting that has to happen, and so um, our final audition was a chemistry read, but it was a chemistry read virtually. Um, um, so we were in different countries, different time zones. Mm. We we spoke to each other on WhatsApp before, and and had to do this sort of very awkward staring into a lens and hoping to have chemistry come through, <laughs> you know, through whatever airwaves. Um, yeah. And just sort of like hoping, like, man, I hope we both get this. Man, I hope, I hope, because this just feels so right. So, yes. you know, it, it's, um, it's of course, a pleasure to work together and, and you know, have the journey both as actors and as characters. You know, we're sort of having this dual experience of, like, you mm-hmm. know, what it is to sort of work on this, but also see where our characters go and be really present in the moment in these scenes and mm-hmm. really really live the lives of these characters. I think you know as well, having such an unorthodox way of uh, uh, addition process, I think you know as well you have, like, a special relationship with somebody when that, that comes across over, like, you know, bad internet signal. <laughs> <laughs> on a Zoom meeting and everything, and you go, all right, this is this is a good connection we have here. This is great. That's amazing. I'm glad you got that. Um, and since you do mention dual experiences, you both have a prior history with uh, historical fantasy type genre projects and on the small screen world. So I'm curious what that was like for each of you, you know, coming onto this set in comparison to the past, especially Tristan, since you are also a fan of Jackson's uh, films. It was it was like I just almost like like you you see in the music videos when they when they just jump into the television or like sort of <laughs> get sucked into a book or something or a video game. It was like it it was incredible. It was yeah uh, unlike anything I've ever I've ever done before. And that's not that's not doing anything else down. I mean it's everything that I've done has been I feel like it's been a terrific experience and fantastic projects. This was just the scale of it. It was so epic. It was, yeah, I mean, it's jaw dropping. I mean, mind blown. So I'm, I'm very, very blessed to, to be a part of this. Yeah, it's true. Nothing nothing yeah. compares, you know, other things that you work on are a nice lead up. You know, in a way you're acquiring skills and having experiences that you don't realize are gonna prepare you for the next thing and the next thing. So for me, I had the lovely experience of, uh, you know, working in New Zealand and having it be a homecoming of sorts because, you know, it was almost a, a decade ago now that I did Spartacus in New Zealand, which is crazy to think it was that long ago. But when I landed in New Zealand and I am, you know, started to embark on this journey, there were a lot of crew that I had worked with way back when. So I saw all these familiar faces amongst the crew, people I'd worked very close with. And when I worked in New Zealand the first time, I thought, Wow, that was amazing. I, I, I'm sad to leave, and you know, I'll probably never get the chance to to do anything like this again. So, you know, coming back to New Zealand, working with people that I'd worked with closely before, but embarking on something completely new, um, it feels like it's the right project, the right story at the right time for me, uh, certainly. So, you know, I just feel very lucky to to be part of it. Thank you both so much for taking the time to chat. I really do appreciate it. Thank Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you. Pleasure talking to you.